Welcome to Quantum Mechanics, a powerful framework for understanding the universe. Hi everybody, welcome back. Today we're going to discuss the notion of conservation of probability, whatever that means, and the probability current, which is going to be a very interesting concept for us, and it's going to give rise to a fascinating analogy with fluid mechanics. So, what do we mean by conservation of probability? Okay, before we get started, keep in mind, I, I want you to make sure you're aware all the time of the difference between probability density and probability. Probability density is the magnitude squared of the wave function, and the probability is the integral of that over the appropriate region of interest. Okay, so conservation of probability. Conservation of probability is going to mean that the probability does not change in time. Okay, and probability current is going to be something that we derive in the course of understanding conservation of probability. So, in other words, if the probability is 1 at time 0, under what conditions does it remain 1 for all time later? That's what we want to show occurs as a result of the structure of the Schrodinger equation. So if our wave function is an eigenfunction, we know this is true because the probability density is independent of time, but it does depend upon space. So what we're going to do is derive a partial differential equation that describes the probability density. So how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to differentiate the probability density with respect to time. Probability density depends on space and time, so it's a partial derivative. So we use the product rule, and what we see here is we have these partial derivative of psi with respect to t and partial derivative of psi bar with respect to t. Well, what we're going to do is use the Schrodinger equation. This is the usual Schrodinger equation, time dependent, where I've isolated partial psi with respect to t. We can take the complex conjugate of that. And we can substitute them in to the previous equation, equation 271. And with a little manipulation, we get this expression here in 274. And the next line is very important too, equal to, the, to that ter uh, term that I just highlight it. So this gives rise to the following definition of probability current. We call it j, vector j of r and t. r is a vector. y is probability current a vector. You should be able to see that with the gradients involved. So the probability current is defined as a definition. h bar over 2mi times this expression which is equal to the second expression on the right. Now, that's not obvious that you can go from here to here without doing a calculation. The first expression is what we get from above just by substituting into the equation d psi dt, d psi bar dt from the Schrodinger equation. So, I want you, to, starting with this, to show that this can be written in this form. It's a little bit tricky with, because of the uh, complex conjugates in the real part out front, but uh, it's a very nice exercise. Um, I remember doing it and getting it wrong for the first few times I did it. It's a great deal of frustration, but I know how to do it now. Anyway, if we collect the terms that we derived above, 
we can show that the probability density and the probability current satisfy the following equation. And I've split this off as a theorem. We just proved it essentially just because it's important. Now this equation, if we weren't in quantum mechanics and you had had the fluid mechanics course, you would say, oh, that's the continuity equation for conservation of mass. And it has exactly the form. In fluid mechanics, rho is the density, mass density, mass per unit volume. J would be the flux, rho times the velocity field. Okay. Now, using this equation, we can then prove that the probability is constant in time. And that's what I've done in the uh, argument below. And I'm going to leave it for you to go through that. It's, it's um, the most important thing is not, well, understanding that argument is useful and you probably, hopefully you've seen it before, maybe vector calculus or fluid mechanics if you took that course. But um, understanding where the probability current came from and how we, and, um, how it relates to conservation of probability through that partial differential equation on the previous page, this continuity-like equation. That's the most important thing, and we're going to use that in this chapter. Okay. So, with the, from that equation, that continuity-like equation, you can conclude for some manipulations by integrating it over a control volume, essentially, that probability is constant in time, which is interesting because probability density need not be. Okay. Now, let's look at the expression for the probability current a bit more closely, and we're going to see a nice analogy with classical mechanics and the fluid dynamical interpretation of the motion of probability density. So, h bar over i, grad psi, we can think of that as the product of momentum times psi. Momentum in its operator form is h bar over i grad. This is an analogy. Okay. Therefore, the probability current has the form of, remember there's a 1 over m there, momentum divided by m, velocity multiplying probability density. Okay. So that would tell us that the probability density is advected in space by this, this velocity. So we see, I mean, this, this may seem a little ab abstract and, and kind of curious, and maybe not that useful at the moment. The most useful facts we have are the probability density and the form of that equation, and we're going to use that when we look at scattering problems shortly and conservation of probability. And that's, conservation of probability is a fundamental, fundamental uh, um, characteristic of quantum mechanics. And keep in mind that we got that by using the Schrodinger equation to derive this continuity equation. And then from the continuity equation, you get conservation of probability. Okay, so this analogy is very nice. Numerous people have picked up on this analogy of the flow of probability, that analogy with, with uh, hydrodynamics or fluid mechanics, and developed quantum mechanics from that point of view. And we're not going to go into that in this course. I'm just mentioning it. Um, Louis de Broglie developed um, pilot wave theory. Edwin 
Madeline developed a hydronet dynamic form of quantum mechanics, and David Bohm developed a hydrodynamic form, which is called Bohmian mechanics. Those are fascinating. They give you a, a, an, an ordinary differential equation point of view of fluid mechanics. Um, and it's something that, uh, you know, is worth, probably worth thinking about pursuing in uh, third year or fourth year projects. I had a couple of students do that. But at the moment, these are the main ideas I wanted to get across. And we will leave it at that for today and come back to the square well next time. Bye, everybody.